we're back. So question number four. If you have a coach that always go over, goes over on time for an hour-long class, how do you resolve it? I give them a timeline. What if they have a timeline and always go over? Then I sit there and coach them. <laughs> and I, uh, I'll sit, like we've, we've had people that have had that problem before, usually yeah. like new coaches, right? Yeah. And I will sit there with them, and if they're slowing down and they need to speed up, I will speed them up. Yeah. You know, hey, a little faster, let's go through this, and then yeah. you coach them the same way you would coach somebody into intensity I'm Karen. Yeah. <laughs> so today, I want you to start the class off. I want you to be done with all the warm-up pieces yeah. in 20 minutes. It allots 30. I want you to be done in 20. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think to the left here. I think one thing, too, is to figure out why they're going over in time. Because yeah. uh, there's, there's going over in time because people are talking too much. And they're just over coaching simplistic movements. Like, I watched one guy... <laughs> I watched one guy, he taught a uh, toy soldier, you know, where you take one foot and touch the other hand and you walk and like kick the feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he taught it for like five minutes. I, I was like, how to do it. <laughs> I was like, you take one hand and you turn right yeah. and you kick your other foot. Like, I don't know what you were talking about for five minutes. Yeah. Um, so if they're over coaching simple movements or even over coaching complex movements, um, sometimes people just like the sound of their own voice. In which case, you do, I think, exactly what you said. Give them a timeline, sit with them for a class, and speed them up. Um, but I think there's also something to be said for people who go over because they're building culture. Uh -huh. And they're connecting with clients. And we, yeah. have, we have a guy like that at NorCal. Um, who, he goes over every time. Every time. But we don't get a single complaint. Because they love him. Because they love him. And, and he loves them. Exactly. Yeah. He loves them. And the reason they're going over, like, what we get complaints on is the next class starting a little later. Yeah. Like, we never get... Because they want to get in there. Because they want to get in there. And they want to be with them. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's like... <laughs> it's a high demand. And it... But that, I think, brings a bigger point is, like, if... You can go straight here. People... The guy is a great coach, don't get me wrong, but he's not like the most technical coach in the world, and he doesn't offer like groundbreaking tips on anything. But he's awesome. But he just cares about the people he's yeah. with, and he loves being in there, and he loves talking to the clients, and those are the people that really you want in your facility. Yep. So I would I would maybe, if it's continually happening, mention it to him, but like understand that if you're watching his classes and, and you're not getting negative feedback on it, but he just always goes over, or she just always goes over, like really see why they're going over. And then, then take the steps, like you were saying. And I think it never hurts to, because I went over the other day when I was coaching. And I know, shame, I, right? I go over almost every time. <laughs> Seriously, no, I almost always go over, and I'm on our coaches about being but, on time. But what do you, yeah. what do you always say to the clients? You, I, I always apologize. I'm always like, guys, I'm so sorry we went over, yeah. and I always let them know when the class has officially ended. Like, mm -hmm. guys, I know it's your, your. You're if you gotta seven go. minutes into our 10 minute Metcon, but if you gotta <laughs> go right now, you can go. Yeah. Just like, just so like, you know, your 6 a.m. class doesn't get late for work and doesn't have negative repercussions and then yep. you're quitting your gym. Yeah. Um, just try to be courteous when you go over. It's not like, well, you could hang out with me. It's like, no, no, no. Try to end them on time. Try to make all that stuff happen because you can get it done in an hour, but also look at why. Yeah. One more, last question. This is like perfect. Like, we have one more question. We need to speed it up. So I'm gonna speed it up. By getting on the freeway. Good, good call. You ready? Okay, yeah. Question. Question. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Uh, oh question God. number five. What is the best way to find quality coaches when you don't have anyone from within your box to recruit? Ah, you're screwed. <laughs> you're screwed. <laughs> uh, money. Yeah, that's hard though too. I know, I know. I just, I, I can't. You own a CrossFit gym, right? You don't need money. Well, depends on the size. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm talking to the wrong person, here, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, with NorCal, we we offer really awesome things. Uh, we can offer really good wages. We can offer healthcare. We can offer full time salaries. Like, yeah. we can offer really cool things like that. Um, I can't offer any of those things at our gym. But one thing that we that I do offer um, is an amazing environment. And yeah. I will make them an amazing coach. Yeah. That's like what I honestly truly believe is that I'll put the time into making them become an amazing coach. Yeah. And I think that's because I've spent the last four years developing myself as a coach. Right. Right. And that's been recognized around the area. And you're not arrogant. 
that kind of settlement area. Well, but you're not. Like, <laughs> the, the point is, like, you put the time into making yourself a coach. That's confidence. Like, you know you're a good coach. But you're not like, I'm a better coach than you. You're like, I'm a good coach, and I want to help other people be good coaches. I find a lot of people who are like, I'm a good coach. I'm going to live on that. And I don't want to help other people become good coaches because that doesn't twiddle my fiddle. But for me, I, like, I love giving information to people and helping shorten their path to becoming a better coach. But So the question, though, is, is like how if you don't have someone in a facility, like what do you do? Uh, what if you put out something on Facebook? Facebook's always a good option. Put it out on social media saying, hey, we're looking for coaches. Right. Come and, by and do an, our internship. Right. There's that. Um, I think you kind of touched on something. is like provide a really good environment. Like um, we at NorCal, long before we were able to pay people very well, uh, we had an amazing retention rate of coaches. Like we have very, very few coaches who have left our, our facility. We have more coaches probably than any other facility out there. Yeah. And I and the reason wasn't because of money. It was it was because we were NorCal. It was because people they wanted, wanted to be a part of NorCal. Right. They wanted to be a part of that. And more so than just the name, it was like they wanted to be a part of, like, the family we'd created with, you know, with Jason and 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 my wife and all the people who op- operate the facilities and the communities we have. Those were, first and foremost, the strongest things that we as owners and operators really focused on was that. So, like, people wanted to be a part of it because it was cool. Um, so if you can offer that, I think you'll draw people in. Yeah. Now, if you're absolutely up shit creek and you don't have coaching options, let's talk about finding someone out of your community. You know, like, hey, I don't have anyone who shows promise. And I, I don't really know what that means. Because um, no. I, I... So... We do... You know, like, how we choose coaches is... Uh, Ben Bergeron, he does. He talked about the car test. What's the car test? Can you sit in a car with them for two hours with no stereo, like me and you right now, uh-huh. and have an awesome time? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's I a could good test. Like seriously, I could throw you in the car. We could drive down to you, down to slow, surf, hang out with each other. And the radio would never turn on. We right. would never need anything outside stimulus to keep us, you know, having a good time. It would just be that. Yeah, no, you're an awesome person, and I enjoy hanging out with you, yeah. right? If you have people like that in your gym, you can teach them to coach. Totally. You can teach them to see if somebody's knees are caving in, or if they're losing lumbar, or if they're, you know, should their elbows be up higher, or how to do a snatch. You can teach anybody that stuff, but you can't teach people how to be good people. Totally. And so I think if you have somebody inside your gym that you know is like, man, they're just like, you gravitate towards them, they walk in the gym and everybody's like, ah, oh, yes, so-and-so's here. Right. You know, and like, they make that class better. Just by them being there, like, grab them. Yeah. Teach them how to coach. It's yeah. going to take a while, for sure. But if they're already that member within the gym that people love so much, people will give them that time. You totally. know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. And I think, too, you don't need to offer them, like, a full-time position. Be like, hey, yeah. I noticed you you know, you know, train and people really enjoy spending time around you. Is there any chance you'd want to exchange for your membership? Like, maybe you coach. Maybe we start you off, like, coaching one night a week or, or you know, like, and maybe not coaching right away but like would you want to learn how to do some of this stuff because in the end they have to want to do it yeah I think you have to uh, one of the best things we ever did was we set up a, a pretty serious internship program where like it, and it wasn't to it wasn't to be like we're setting up an internship program to like be gnarly and like have people want to quit it was like it was set up for them to succeed right you know and it was like I want you to feel completely 100% comfortable moving on to this next step before we even do and then as they feel more comfortable and they get confidence, then they're going to move on. Yeah. I think having something like that in place will encourage people to do it too as well. Yeah. Because then they're not like, oh, I'm just going to get thrown into coaching and I don't know what's going on and I'm going to be so scared. And like, what if I don't close the place right? What if I don't yeah. open? What if that kid, the internet turns off? What if uh, somebody wants to buy something and I, and I don't know what to charge them? You know what I mean? Right. Like if you already have all that stuff set up in place in your internship program, like yeah, they're gonna be. Your, it's gonna be easy for them when it finally comes time for them to tell somebody knees out, chest up. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So that makes sense. Set up that internship program first, I would say, and then second, I would say find somebody in the gym that people gravitate towards. Yeah. And then if you don't have that, because it sounds like this guy's saying like he doesn't have anyone in his gym. <laughs> like, nice. and that seems like an yeah. uh, an obvious thing. If people gravitating towards someone, come to him. Yeah. 
uh, the car test for, for people who don't even seem like they would be that great coaches. Car test seems great. Yeah. Like I, I, that's, I mean, that's what I do. I've done naturally with when I take people on from outside the gym to hire them in. I just drive around with them and I spend time with them and I sit with them and I take them out to breakfast and I like, I just, and it's, it's pretty funny for me because a lot of these people come in super scared because they're interviewing for like a, <laughs> like a, for NorCal and they come in with this. That's so funny. It, it cracks like you me You guys up. have gotten to that point now it, where it's like a, it's like an interview for like a real job. Isn't it funny? <laughs> and then they're know? sitting talking to me who I'm like just like sarcastic asshole yeah. who, who like I'm going to try to be as friendly as I can, but I, I can only do stuff in like what I consider to be funny ways, which is not always funny for everyone and when you're in a high pressure situation, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, with the people who make it through that, are, like usually they're just good people, you know? Yep. Um, another thing that I've recently been thinking about is... Uh, finding people who connect with other people emotionally. So this this is, maybe we'll just talk about this really quickly, but because we're home now and the show is over. But I, I was doing, uh, listening to a book on tape, because I can't read for anything, um, called The Whole Brain Child. The Whole, okay. And it's about raising kids with regards to brain science. Okay. And it's really cool. I suggest anyone out there who has kids. What's it called? The whole brain the whole child. Brain child. But in, in general, it talks just about brain science and it's just some basic stuff is like there's the right side of your brain and the left side of your brain. Right side of your brain is like emotion and mm-hmm. right brain people tend to be more emotional and connect emotionally. Mm-hmm. Left side brain people tend to be uh, a lot more logical. So left side of the brain is like logic and order and structure and so you've got your right and your left side of the brain. Yeah. Um, and as you're growing up and when you're talking to kids and when you're doing this stuff, you want to like think of those two sides of the brain as like two banks of a river and you want to kind of be cruising down the middle of the river and occasionally you're going to go towards one side or the other, mm-hmm. emotion or logic, mm-hmm. but you want to kind of like try to be giving your, your child both and heading them and their mentality kind of down the middle so you have equal parts logic and emotion. And people who only get raised one way tend to only be one way. Mm-hmm. So they tend to only be emotional with very little, like, logical yeah. and, and you know, ability to uh, enjoy systems or whatever happens. Mm-hmm. People who only get that throughout life, like, this is order, this is structure, this is what you're going to do, tend to only be that way. Yeah. Um, and the goal with raising a kid is to have them be both. Yeah. Now, I thought about this with regards to finding a coach is, like, if I'm looking for somebody to pick up and turn into a coach... I think I'm genuinely always going to go for an emotional coach. Someone who can connect emotionally with people, first and foremost. Uh-huh. Because emotional connections with other people are so much of our job. <laughs> it like, is our job. That, that's, that's 100% of our job. It is. It's like, 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 yeah, you get them to move safe, but what are you really? You're a therapist. You're really a therapist. Yeah. And yeah. so, and then I'm also using this because I'm finding I have coaches who have all the technical ability in the world. But there's something lacking in but that how classes. Do you get a, how do you get that across somebody if they're not even going to listen to you in the beginning? Well, what you do is you sit with them and you explain the brain to them. That's yeah. what I'm doing. So I sat down with a couple of coaches and I'm like, hey, this is how the brain works. And if you were raised a certain way, you might just be like this. And you have an inability to connect in the same way. Uh-huh. And maybe we're seeing this in our classes. But you're saying that you can actually train these things? So. I, yeah, totally. As an adult, you can completely train these things. But it takes awareness and consciousness of it. Yeah. So I'm thinking that maybe if we have, because they're, they're not completely inept, of, I mean, uh, in lack of emotion completely. Mm-hmm. They just, compared to somebody who's actually emotional, they don't connect on an emotional level with people. Mm-hmm. And that might be hard for someone, but I think if I'm looking to find someone who's fresh out the boat, You're looking for somebody who's I'm looking emotional. for someone who's emotional, who can connect with people emotionally. And those will generally be the people that gravitate towards other people, but like, try to talk to people and see like what their brains yeah, are. If I look at like the coaches that we have, like they're, yeah, I would Isn't say that cool? that that's true, for sure. And that, for me too, I was like, huh. Mm-hmm. So for interesting, what was this guy's name? I didn't actually say. Oh, so for I mean, I would say, look inside your your gym, and like if there's somebody that you like immediately think of in your head that you're like, yeah, so and so's rad, yeah. and I'm so happy when he comes in every day. It's easy to talk to him. He creates great conversation. I don't have to, like I would gravitate towards that person and if if those people that you have in your gym you can't get them they have a full-time job whatever it may be they don't want to coach um then outside of that it's like 
you need to start building a culture with inside your gym that like this is the place to be yeah. you know and getting people to want to gravitate towards you now that's easier said than done um but if that doesn't work post on facebook post on instagram saying that you guys are looking for coaches mm-hmm. you know and start interviewing set up your internship program yeah Talk to other gyms in other areas. Like, yep. And, like, even because we're a pretty good community. Like, you can walk up to someone and be like, hey, man, do you have anybody who's looking to intern or do anything like that? I need somebody over at my facility. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing is you might just have to bite the bullet and start and work more hours until that happens. Yep. Which, as an owner, that's what you got yourself into. Yep. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> High five. Show 1.2. Maybe in two show episodes. Done. Cool. What do we call it? CIC. CIC. Boom.